453, perform the following calculations involving concentrations of iodate ions. And then we have letter B. So in this case, we have to find the concentration of the iodate ions in a saturated solution of CuIO32. And then they told us the KSP is 7.4 times 10 to the negative eighth. Now, we're already 53 questions deep into this chapter, right? Anytime that we see a KSP value, we need to just write a balanced equation. And the balanced equation for a solubility product, the KSP, always comes from the compound. And then we're just going to break it down into its ions. So in this case, we have Cu, IO32, and that's the solid that is going to dissociate into its two ions, right? The two ions are the copper and the iodate, right? Iodate is a polyatomic ion, so they can't break up. So we have Cu plus IO3. Now we need charges, so we could always use the subscripts. So there was one copper and two iodates. This one crisscrosses up, telling me that I had a negative one charge for the iodate. So there's a negative one here. And then this two crisscrosses up, telling me that I had a plus two for the copper. And then since they both have charges, that's aqueous. So cool for that. And let's just balance this out. I do have the two iodates, so I need to put a two in front of here. And we're good now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write the, the specific KSP equation for our balanced equation. Remember, the general one is this right here. It's just KSP equals the product's ratio of the coefficients. So in our case, we had KSP equals the two products. So I have concentration of Cu, 2 plus, times the concentration of IO3 minus. And since there is a two here, I have to take this and square it. But now I don't know what these values are, right? The only thing they told me was the KSP was 7.4 times 10 to the negative eighth. So let me just move this a little bit downward. We have to come up with variables for these two ions. Well, if we don't know something, we label it as X, right? So I'll start with the copper. I'll say, I don't know this concentration. I'll label it as X. And for these, just take your coefficients. So since there was only one copper, this is technically a 1X, but 1 times X is just X. But over here, since I don't know my IO3, when I label it as X, this is a 2 in front. So I just say that this is 2X. And these are your variables that you're going to plug in in for here. So the copper is going to be X and the iodate is going to be 2X. Okay, so let's go for it. 7.4 times 10 to the negative eighth equals, we have X times 2X squared. Let's work on this 2X squared, right? 2X squared just means that you have two of the same thing. And in this case, it's two 2Xs and they're times by each other. So work with the numbers first. Two times two is four. And how many X's do you have? You picked up two of them. So that's four X squared. So I could just get rid of this and just say that this is now four X squared. Combine the one more X that you have here. And now it's 7.4 times 10 to the negative eighth equals four X cubed. We'll divide by four on both sides to get rid of the four. So 7.4 times 10 to the negative eight divided by four. I get 1.85 times 10 to the negative eighth, and that equals x cubed. So now we could do the cube root on both sides. Me personally, if it's anything other than the square root, I like to just raise this to the inverse number. So three is really three over one. So I can just raise this to the one third. And whatever you do on this side, you have to do on this side. This is essentially what a cube root is. So this would cancel. And now whatever that X value is, or whatever that math is, that's the X value. So I'm just going to raise this to the one third and two sig figs, I guess. 
So 2.6. 2.6 times 10 to the negative third molarity. But now we just have to make sure that we answer the question. Well, let's see. We wanted to find the concentration of the iodate ions. So I have to go back and I say, okay, here's the iodate. The iodate was represented by a 2x. So I have to go back, and since I know what that x value is, 2.6 times 10 to the negative third, I just have to times it by 2. So what is that? 5.2? 5.2 times 10 to the negative third, and that's molarity. And that is your final answer. So just make sure. What did you label it as? Since we labeled it as 2x, I have to go back and times it by 2. All right? So I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. If you guys are on the playlist, I'll see you for number 54. Uh, I think we're like halfway done through this chapter. This chapter has been really long, <laughs> but I'm having fun. I hope you are too. Well, at least not having fun, but I hope you're eh, learning some chemistry. <laughs> I will see you later. Okay, bye-bye.